Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a quick rundown here of my uh, Fractal Audio FM3 Super Gig Rig. Uh, I started putting this pedal board together last summer when the FM3 was announced because I was all excited to uh, have a nice compact easy rig that I can just plug and play and go. Uh, I've been using the Axe FX2 for about six years along with a pair of Zytone uh, FRFR wedges and uh, this pedal board down here, uh, which is a uh, uh, Morningstar MC6, the older version, uh, a J Rocket Elm Holdsworth Overdrive, and two Roland EV5 pedals. Uh, so I've been using that, but it, I love it other than it's kind of bulky, especially if I'm in a really tight stage space, you know, sometimes having all these gears a little tedious, plus running these MIDI cables and uh, an extra power cable for the pedal board. Uh, the idea of being able to slim down to just a single pedal board was very appealing to me. So I started putting this together, and then the series of unfortunate instances unfolded where the FM3 release kept getting delayed, and I wasn't able to get a hold of one until June of this year after the pandemic hit, and all of my gigs disappeared. So I've got this wonderfully portable rig and nowhere to go. But uh, hopefully someday when things return to normal, uh, I'll have this very convenient uh, rig to go. So hopefully you can get some ideas for building your own rig uh, for uh, for travel. So I've got all this mounted on a uh, pedal train Novo 18 and we'll just follow the signal path here uh, going in to a uh, boss line selector which I use to switch between guitars so I'm just A, B between the two and the nice thing is having level controls in here so I can switch between a Les Paul and a Strat. I can boost the line level of the Strat uh, so that we don't have to have separate patches for different uh, guitars. I can kind of level out the um, the input nicely. So the output of that then goes to the underside of the board, which under here I have mounted, which you can't really see because it's buried under cables, but there's a um, uh, disaster area uh, three channel loop selector. Uh, you can see that blue light is indicating one of the channels is on. So it's uh, a three, an ABC uh, uh, loop selector. Uh, currently, I have hooked up to B. Uh, goes first to this uh, ISP noise gate down here, which uh, there it is. Running to the front side to another Alan Holdsworth overdrive, which I love this pedal. Uh, despite Alan's name being on it, it's not a high gain pedal as you'd think, but rather it's actually a pretty light transparent overdrive with a um, with a boost uh, meant to be put in front of an amp like you would a tube, uh, like a high gain amp in front of uh, like a tube screamer would. So uh, I don't think Alan ever used this particular one, but he did help design it and uh, he had a pretty similar setup just using different gear. So that's on channel B and I've specifically put it there because I wanted to be able to patch in on either A or C before or after the uh, overdrive additional pedals. So I've got two disaster area insert boxes. So uh, right now I've got, uh, just for fun, uh, a Super Ego hooked up uh, here. So this is uh, currently after the overdrive pedal. And if you unplug it, it completes the circuit so uh, your signal path is always running through there. So you can add a pedal, take it out, and there you go. Uh, I don't have anything plugged into A at the moment, but I could add another pedal if I wanted to. I could also use those to plug in additional guitars if I need to. And since it's on a MIDI controlled loop selector, uh, that means I can also change guitars uh, by patches, by scenes, etc. So I have a lot of control over inputs without having to unplug and replug different guitars in. So uh, the output of the looper goes into the FM3 and then all the magic happens there. The output, uh, actually, the if I'm using the out in and out two as an effects loop, and that is running to. Uh, eventually, it runs to the specular tempus reverb. But before that, I put in another uh, disaster area insert. Uh, supposedly, these are stereo. Although when I got them, they were wired mono. They do have stereo jacks, though. So I had to open this one up and. Uh, connect the uh, the center lugs and all of them, uh, but this one actually is stereo. So if I wanted to, say, plug in a stereo effects pedal, uh, just using a breakout cable, uh, stereo Y cable, I could plug that in, 
and have stereo effect added in between the FM3 and uh, the reverb. So uh, the Specular Tempest, I'm really glad I got this. It's both a wonderful sounding reverb, but it also offloads the um, reverb from the FM3, which greatly frees up the CPU. So I've generally found the patches that I had on the Axe FX, uh, I can pretty much recreate on the FM3 without really running out of CPU. Uh, things that would push the Axe FX2 are pretty much pushing the FM3 with the uh, reverb not present. So it greatly has expanded uh, the complexity of patches that I can build. So, uh, all right, so the outputs, two XLRs here, are running underneath to this Mackie uh, stereo passive DI box. So I've got uh, two DIs with very readily accessible ground lift to run front of house. And that also passes through on the underside over to a patch bay uh, from Bestronics. So I've got my stereo left and right out, as well as a power con uh, for easy uh, power connection. And that's the complete uh, audio path. So I've got both line selector on the way in, uh, a MIDI controlled looper with two inserts before the FM3, another insert on the stereo uh, effects loop with uh, external reverb, uh, also MIDI control. And now we'll talk about the uh, MIDI path. So I've got a uh, Morningstar MC6 Mark II, which uh, is a wonderful little pedal and a lot of cool little uh, feature upgrades from the Mark I. So mostly I'm just using this to control scenes, but I can also use this to uh, select which loop is active on the uh, disaster area loop selector or uh, change patches on the reverb. So for example, if I hold this, now I can uh, switch between some common patches and hold that, return back to where it was. So uh, the output of this, remember how I hooked this up, <laughs> is running to, on the back side here, yeah. uh, a MIDI Solutions uh, splitter, which is here. Uh, which has to be powered, unfortunately, so I need two boxes. I already had these from another pedal board, so even though they're kind of bulky, they're extremely light, so uh, so that's splitting the MIDI signal. One of it's going to the uh, disaster area loop selector, and then through that is running to the Specular Tempest. The other path is running out to the FM3, and then the FM3's MIDI out runs to the MC6. And very important, the FM3 does not have MIDI through turned on, but the MC6 does. If they both did, you would have a feedback loop, which I discovered the hard way, and it crashed the Specular Tempest, and I had to reflash the firmware to get it to work again. Fortunately, everything was fine, but uh, be very careful with that. So uh, any message from the FM3 goes through the MC6 to either the loop selector or the reverb. And then messages from the MC6 go directly out to anything, any one of those three devices. So sometimes uh, I can control the FM3 with the MC6, but the FM3 can also control the MC6. So for example, say if I were to change patches to something else, uh, let's go with this one. Uh, no, let's go with that one. When I do that, it also sends a bank message and changes the uh, presets on the, or the bank of presets on the MC6. And I could also go to a bank that has some of my favorite presets. When I do that, it changes the preset on the FM3. So a lot of between device uh, control. On the, my patches in the FM3, uh, I use the MIDI block. And as I change scenes, it'll change or bypass the reverb patches and also change which loops are active or inactive. Uh, so I can take the uh, Allen Holdsworth pedal in or out, depending on if I want it, or I can do the same thing with uh, the A and B, or sorry, A and C loops uh, for additional pedals. So a lot of nice control there. Uh, the two Roland EV5s are plugged into the MC6, and I've assigned them as external one and two. Uh, personally, I always set this as volume on every patch, and then this is depending what the patch has, either wah or rotary speed or uh, input gain on a delay or whatever I feel like you know having on the patch. And then I have a Bright Onion um, 
uh, two button switch, which is plugged into the uh, switch jack. And I've got this set up to be a tuner, uh, tap tempo for the other one. If I hold it, uh, it gives me the master layout. Or if I hold the other one, it gives me the looper layout. So it's just quick access to some things that I think I would probably use a whole lot. Uh, the general layout is I have the first six scenes on the MC6, and then uh, probably not showing up too well here on the camera because it's a lot of light, but uh, scenes seven and eight. Uh, so I've got access to all eight scenes uh, between these buttons here. So uh, the second switch input is currently un unused. I've got a second one of these Bright Onion switches, so if I'm ever playing a gig where I really don't need to be controlling a whole lot and I am really at a loss for floor space, I can uh, set this off to the side somewhere uh, or on top of my, my speaker, and then I'll just have one of these with an extension cord, and I've got it programmed to be uh, preset or scene plus and minus. Uh, so I can uh, have a little control over sounds without uh, having to uh, use any floor space. But, uh, so that's the, uh, the whole thing. Uh, it ended up being a little bit on the hefty side. This weighs about uh, 25 pounds, which I guess isn't that bad. I lugged around a deluxe reverb for years, and even that little amp is heavier than this. So, uh, the to carry it all around, I have it's a little bit of a mess here, but I have a Mackie mixer board to make one that happens to be exactly the right dimensions for a Novo 18, and it's way better than the stock pedal train board. Which I don't know what you were thinking, pedal train, but uh, the idea to make bags without pockets. Bad news. <laughs> so, this has a uh, wonderful huge pocket in it, uh, so I've got all my various cables that I need for it, uh, and it's pretty well built, uh, so this seems to be working pretty well for me. So between those two things, I've got a very nice gig-ready, uh, easy plug-and-play uh, setup to go. I just need to wait for uh, wait for some gigs to return, so <laughs> hopefully I'll give you some ideas for building your own FM3 pedal board. Okay, I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, when I added all that stuff underneath, I did, in fact, uh, have trouble fitting it all under there, so I bought the Bestronics lift kit and installed longer rubber feet, and that gave me just the extra little bit of clearance that uh, uh, decimator is no longer touching the floor, so uh, it was pretty easy to install. They've got a YouTube video that explains it, so it just def definitely adds just a little bit of clearance. Well, I'm not really unstable ground right now, but there we go. So now. It doesn't wobble, which is important. So, uh, hats off to Bestronics, both for the wonderful patch bay and the lift kit. Makes things work the way it should.